Okay, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam You're watching Islam tomorrow, we're broadcasting almost live today, coming to you from Mission Viejo. And you know what mission is, right? There was a mission that was established by the Catholic Church many years ago to go out and spread their message. And they put these priests in all these different places on earth and put these little missions together. And they get the local people to do all the work and donate all the rocks and bricks to put it together and converted them to Christianity. And that's how they did it. People are asking the questions and we want to deal with questions right now. By the way, uh, I work a little bit different than the scholars of Islam. I don't consider myself a scholar. I just lucky that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let me have a little bit of idea some things. So instead of questions, you can also pass up the answers and I'll try to guess what the question was. Like Jeopardy? Just send me up the answer. That's okay too. Okay, where was I? First question, here we go. All right. Do the Muslims have to wear hijab? No. No. At least not all of them. Not the men, they don't have to. <laughs> Second question. <laughs> Second question. <clears throat> Yes, uh, do the Muslims have to grow a beard? Same answer, not all of them, not the women. <laughs> By the way, if you laugh at this, you'll laugh at anything. <laughs> but here is, yeah, uh, one is asking, brother, please make dua for me to grow my beard. I can't do that, that's shirk. That shirk, did you know that shirk? It is, a man can't grow a beard, did you know that? He can't. Allah is growing the beard, right? But I will make dua that you'll quit cutting it off after Allah grows it. I'll do that for you, yes. And then, oh, here's another one. He said, what do I do? My wife doesn't like me to grow the beard. She wants me to be clean shaven. Hmm. Well, I got to wonder about a woman that wants her husband to look like another woman. But anyway, let's see another one we got here. Well, I'm in trouble now, right? <laughs> Don't bring him back to this part of California. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this is a real question. It says, what do you think is the primary disease in the Muslim community and how do we cure ourselves? Well, like many questions, sometimes you have to straighten a question out to get to the answer. First of all, I didn't say there's a disease, but if there is one, I think I know what the name of it should be. Because Rasul Sassam told us about our condition in the last days and how we'd be having something called habadunya, love for the material world. So I think we all are suffering from dunya-itis. I think that's it, maybe. And the cure would be what? To start giving up some of this dunya stuff and spending more time with the worship of Allah spending more time with our families because really and truly it's so easy to get hooked up in, in this world today with material things want that new car huh? Yeah. that big house come on man and that widescreen TV come on, give me a break and that surround sound whoo and when I got my new games and play them, I can hear all that crashing and dancing around my head. Oh, wow. But what is that? What is that taking the place of? When I'm doing these things, am I thinking about Allah? Or am I thinking about what Allah created? Think about it. Because this is your choice. It's your choice. All through your whole life, it's your choice. What do you want to do with your time? Every single second, I don't know, have you ever seen Hourglass? Any of you ever watched Hourglass, how the sand goes through? Each grain of sand when it drops, each grain is something you're going to be asked about on the Day of Judgment. What did you do with that time that Allah gave you? Huh? And I just can't imagine what we're going to say when He asks us. Are we going to say, oh, I was spending this time reading Quran? 
I was spending this time in Sadaka, I was helping people, I was giving charity to the poor. I was striving in the case of Allah, I was out here, Sabilillah, trying my best, or what? What? Now some of you have a good argument, you have a really good argument, you think, about getting knowledge. Brother, you're going to tell me, brother, we have to get knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ told us to get knowledge even if we have to go to China. Seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave, right? Is it? Those are fabricated hadith, they're not true. Oh! Oh my God. Then you'll come back, yeah, yeah, but, but, but. Allah said in the Quran, read. And because of that, we have to go learn how to read. Well, I got news for you. Start out by learning Arabic and you'll find out that's not what the word Iqra means. It means recite, not read. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, I know me. I don't know how to read and write. I'm illiterate, duh. So how did you get read out of that? He didn't run out to a university and sign up for a course, did he? He died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, without knowing how to read and write. Is that true or false? So how did you twist that around to be a university degree? Huh? And how did you make your children wait until they were 38 years old to get married because they had to have all these degrees and have a house and have enough money to buy the girl, oh excuse me, for the dowry for this family? Huh? And Rasul Sassanam said it real clear, as soon as they're old enough, get them married. Is that right? Did he say that? How old were you when you got married? <laughs> 31. Huh? 31. You were 31 when you got married? <laughs> How many degrees do you have now? <laughs> if you want degrees, go buy a thermometer. It's loaded with degrees. <laughs> but let the kids get married. Come on, guys. What is this stuff? We got something in Texas. We say, put your money where your mouth is, right? Okay, I had to look at myself too. I have daughters, but I didn't want to get them married. I said, no, no, they don't, you know, they're, they're not old enough yet. They got to do this, they got to do that. And basically, I don't want to let them go. That's what the truth is. And then who's going to wash the dishes if all these girls leave? Me? I don't think so. <laughs> Tell the truth, right? But I said, no, I got to do it. This is what Islam says. So alhamdulillah. Allah made a beautiful story for her to get married. The first one is unbelievable. Her husband's here tonight. He'll be, he's already turned red. So alhamdulillah. Might as well tell the rest of it. Well, they got married. You believe it? Allah made it so beautiful. They met where? In Medina. I took her to Medina t uh, with the idea, well, we're going to make Hajj too. My wife is with us. But also I had a second agenda. Before we put on ihram, because once you put on ihram, there's no deal about marriage. Leave it alone, because you're there for hajj. But until you put that on, you can talk about it. So they got to meet. I was like a love story in the book. <laughs> and they met. And we're, of course, we're all sitting there, you know. And I know his family. And I was talking with his mom about the situation. And I know he's mad at me right now. <laughs> I'm not going to tell the part where your mother sold you to me for that. Yeah, anyhow, <laughs> oops. <laughs> anyway, uh, we, we just love their family so much. They, we get along good and everything. And then they got to meet each other. But they were so shy they wouldn't talk. They were looking at like, you'd say something. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I told them, I said, in the morning we got to go. We got to leave out to go for Hajj. So what do you say? And he and I were, he was just like he is tonight, taking me around different places. And then I said, okay, what do you think? And he's going, huh? He said, get married now, tonight. How? So we went over to the Prophet's masjid, Salai Salam, and right outside the door to the entrance of it, we laid down some like blankets or something. We sat down there and we did the whole marriage thing right there, wrote it all out. The ladies on one little area, boys on another area. And then we got her to sign it and everything was done right there. And it was really sweet. And the one brother with us, he was saying, Zawaj, Zawaj, and it, which means marriage, marriage. And he was saying, you know, make dua, make dua. And he was all excited, handing out dates and all kind of stuff. A brother from Indonesia passed by. We don't know who he was, never gave his name, nothing. He stopped and he got all excited. He started crying. He started making beautiful dua. 
Unbelievable dua, and then he just like disappeared. We, where did he go? We don't know. And it was so great, you know what? And then they opened the doors to the masjid back up, and we got to go in and, and be close to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and uh, make salah in there, and then in the morning we put on the ihram, and, and we left him sitting there. <laughs> And she's looking at the bus with these. Ooh, and it, ooh. Alhamdulillah. A few days later, Alhamdulillah. It's very beautiful. I get a knock on the hotel door. I open the door. Who's standing there wearing ihram? Somehow he managed.